Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. Before you have a question, yes, it is cold here. It is uh, below 60 degrees, so I'm not uh, very happy. Also, I've been uh, fasting for the last three days, so I'm kind of uh, tired. And, and if I get irritated, it's just the food talk. So let's just jump into it and talk about this post today. It's not about the post that was written. It's about the conversation around it. And I think it's an important thing to distinguish between what Bitcoin can be, who it's for, should you sell, should you not sell, and go from there. Now, I can't give financial advice, definitely not your dad, but this does raise some interesting questions. So this is a tweet uh, from this morning. Jameson Lopp, uh, he is uh, privacy co-founder, chief security officer at Casa Hotel, creator of Bitcoin page and Satoshi.info. So knows quite a bit about uh, Bitcoin itself. And he says, look, Bitcoin self-custody isn't just about being a paranoid mountain man. What he's talking about being a paranoid mountain man is somebody who just goes away from civilization and lives off the grid and has a log cabin house and doesn't really talk to anybody or do much or much interaction and just kind of checks out of society, which I got to tell you, doesn't sound too bad. But he says, you know, there are many long term negative ramifications to convincing people to trust third party custodians. One, centralizing coins into a few hands increases systemic risk of loss and seizure. And we've saw that with a lot of the centralized exchanges and what has happened. And we can just take a look at, oh, I don't know, Mt. Gox, FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi. You get the point. Bitcoiners get disenfranchised from participating in governance activities like running nodes or trading forks. Ossification arguments are strengthened because institutions don't care. Permissionless scaling gets deprioritized because we can just scale via trusted third-party IOUs or just send everything over to Amazon Web Service. Seems pretty simple, right? And he's saying that's not a good idea. And Vitalik chimes in, Vitalik Buterin, we know this guy. He is the one of the co-founders of Ethereum. He says, look, I probably did more than most to spread the mountain man trope. I consider those remarks of mine outdated. Snarks and double-A change the trade-off Space complete. And I'll happily say that I think Sailor's comments are BS insane. He seems to be explicitly arguing for a, re a regulatory capture approach to protecting crypto. When you have regulated public entities, and this is he's quoting here. When you have pu regulated public entities like BlackRock and Fidelity and holding that asset, all the lawmakers and law enforcement arms are invested in those entities. So essentially what, he's, what was said by Sailor, from what I can surmise from this, is Sailor is like, look, it's good if the centralized authorities do invest into Bitcoin. Were we not jumping up and down for joy when Donald Trump came out and says, we're going to make Bitcoin as a reserve asset? Yes, we were. Is that the greatest thing for us as far as the centralization? No, it is not. There's plenty of precedent for how, this, how far this strategy can fail. And for me, it's not what crypto is about. And there was a couple of different people that were, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a little distraction there. He says, yeah, I might've spread the uh, mountain trope myself. And then some heavyweights chime in. Charles Hoskinson essentially saying, look, I've been talking about decentralization for the very longest of times. Now, Charles Hoskinson did say that as next 10 years, they're gonna overtake Ethereum and decade after that, Bitcoin. But hey, that's out of a longer interview. So I encourage you to watch the whole thing. I thought it was interesting. But he's right. Decentralization is a good thing. And it is a great thing because you can't shut it down and is a single point of failure or multiple point of failures that are easier to attack as far as an attack vector, right? We want to decentralize as much as possible. Bitcoin nodes right now are approaching, I want to say it's over 100,000. And of course, the miners help to stabilize the network itself. And then Mert from Helios.dev. Uh, and if you don't know Mert, he's a big, big, big player in the uh, Solana ecosystem. And I think he's got the first or second largest delegating delegator trope for Solana. I could be wrong. Check me in the comment section. He says, look, never forget. And this was a interview <laughs> or actually a statement or a appearance by Michael Saylor. He says, I'm not going to play it, but I'll just remind you that he said, yeah, this was in the summer, May 3rd. Ethereum, Binance Coin, Solana, Ripple, Cardano will be deemed a security this summer and will never be accepted by Wall Street. I don't know if he's gonna be right, but there's been a lot of talk about 
an ETF for Solana. Let's see if it actually goes through. Again, like what he says is uh, so far somewhat accurate. But the thing you have to ask yourself is this, do you believe in that? Or do you believe that it should be totally decentralized? We should have no centralization. People should not let anybody else custody their Bitcoin and they should learn about cold storage. I believe that. However, I will say this, I think they're both right. I'm gonna tell you why. Because our umbrella should be as broad as we possibly can get. If you are an individual, I know some people say, well, they shouldn't even invest anyhow. Look, I'm trying to get as many people here as we possibly can. If you have a number, a large number of people, and they don't want to custody it because they hear the horror stories, let them do an ETF. I don't care. Let the banks custody if they really want to. They're going to learn. They're going to learn about why it is important. Give them time to understand and do the research. Bring them in with a Trojan horse, ETF, banks, I don't care. As time goes on, we teach them and, and instruct them about why it is so important for self-custody. We teach them not about Ledger. Ledger, me personally, this is just my personal opinion. I think it's too cumbersome and it's an outdated technology. It is very safe, that is true. But in all honesty, do you really want to sit down with your mom, dad, grandma, grandparents, or just your buddies and go, this is how you use a Ledger. And you had to connect it here and download this and whatever else. It's great for the OGs like us, but I'm telling you right now, I think we need a better option. I personally like Tangem, that's just my personal choice, but I use both. So to break into this and really kind of get into the, the nitty gritty, because I like, I, I like the conversation. And the question you have to, hands, have to ask yourself is, well, first of all, should you even sell Bitcoin as well as the self-custody or non-custodial aspect? So the thing about selling, I get where Michael Saylor is coming from, which is you never sell your Bitcoin. Again, normies are not going to figure this out. And it works out really well for Michael Saylor. Because remember, I mean, once he put Bitcoin in the balance sheet, what happened to his stock? It went up magnificently. And I think it's beating everything in the S&P 500. Correct me in the comment section. I think MicroStrategy is crushing it. And if you may know, over the last 20 years or so, it did okay, but it didn't do anything until Bitcoin was put on the, on the balance sheet. And that's what surprises me why I don't understand why more corporations don't do it. And some people will say, well, there's a, there's a legal loophole and there's, and there's problems with getting on the balance sheet. Look, if you're about to make that much money, I guarantee corporations can make it work. They'll find a way to make money. Anyhow, there's no reason to sell Bitcoin. And I don't know if you are like Michael Saylor, if you're a billionaire and you can sell your, or excuse me, not sell your stock, you can take a loan against your stock, buy, borrow, die, right? You can have this stock, you can borrow against it, take out massive loans, fund your extravagant lifestyle, whatever that is. But I think for a lot of us, it doesn't really work out. I think at some point, maybe you do want to take some profits. There is a website, sailortracker.com. I didn't link in the description, sorry. I'll try to get that later. But if you want to just track what Sailor's got going on, there it is. But as a reminder, not, not everybody gets it right the very first go around. So with Sailor here, this was his tweet from 2013, very famous. Bitcoin days are numbered. It seems like just a matter of time before it suffers the same fate as online gambling. And now look where he's at right now. So all the people and all the friends and all the different individuals that you listen to are here on TV. They just haven't figured it out yet. And I get it. And here's another one. This is just from 2023. Michael Saylor states that ordinals are like really awful sawdust donuts. Very stupid idea. And then just a year later, Michael Strategy unveils plans for Bitcoin-based decentralized identity using ordinals. I mean, look, it's just, there's just a progression of what you actually have to learn. What's the difference between runes and ordinals? Runes are optimized, and this is all in the Bitcoin blockchain. Runes are optimized for non-fungibility, providing features and capabilities that make it easier to mint, transfer, and trade unique tokens, while ordinals can be used to manage unique items. Primary strength lies in their versatility. Now, I think that meme coins are going to outperform. And if you hate meme coins, gotcha, I understand. But what about a meme coin that's actually on Bitcoin right now that is a rune? It's called Dog Go to the Moon. What I like about this one, circling supply, total supply, and max supply, the exact same. There is no dumpage, there is no VCs, there is no promotions. I don't get paid for this. I will tell you this, I do own it, so I'm super biased. So take that with a grain of salt. But again, if you've got time, 
I still think that having your funds into dollars is not a good idea. It's all about assets. And this is a prime example. In 2016, the average house, median price of a house was 288,000 here in the US. And just four years later, it was 328,000. And four years after that, it was 434,000. Heck, even here in El Paso, I've been seeing average house, not average, but some pretty high end houses, like for 460,000, like you gotta be kidding me. The whole thing comes down to this. If you don't hold Bitcoin, the dollar will get inflated away. If you don't hold Bitcoin, everything else that's denominated in dollars will go up and everything else that goes into Bitcoin will go down. Does, will it go down day to day? No, it won't. You have to have a long time horizon. That's where the four years comes in. But again, nobody's perfect. I just took some profits, uh, I don't know, four days ago or something like that. Will I have regrets? No, because that ship has sailed. Just know if you do take profits, this is from Captain Bitcoin, and even this guy got it. He realized it. In 2015, he says, I sold 800 Bitcoin to buy a house for my family. Imagine how much that Bitcoin would be worth a day, 800 Bitcoin. But you can't do that. In 2018, I sold my house and bought back 50 Bitcoin. People think I'm crazy for selling my house. Please know that my only regret is to have sold my Bitcoins. But should you never sell? This is from El Salvador. And it was Bitcoin was legal tender in June 2021. June and November, it doubled. And then in November 2021 to November 2022, you'd lost 77% for the value of Bitcoin. Should they have sold it? Well, if you got to pay your bills, you got to do something, right? You're not a billionaire. Maybe you don't have the stocks, but if you can't hold on to it, hold on to it. Not a bad idea. So the whole thing that comes down to this is I don't know what Bitcoin's going to be. I think it's just like the old technology that we haven't figured it out. Like iron was created in 5000 BC. Then there's an alloy of iron and carbon called steel. That was made in 1800 BC. Steel we made into high rise trains. Even uh, uh, the X Falcon, I think, has st steel on it. And there's different, different panels to it. But again, it's technology that took a long time. So in 2009, people just thought it was going to be Bitcoin's going to be peer to peer transactions. We know that's not happening. Gold 2.0, inflation hedge. Yeah, maybe. But I like this response from Guy over at Coin Bureau. And he said, it really comes down to three things right now. And if people ask you just like, why do you believe in Bitcoin? I mean, you can start with the centralization, but they're not going to figure that out. But just, I, I said it like this, it's the DUI. It comes down to the basement, unstable geopolitical trends, and inflation. And if they know anything about the money printer, they know about inflation. If they know anything about history, they know about the, 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 the debasement of the currency. And they know anything that's going on in the world, unstable geopolitical trends, well, that's great if you want to trade and transact in something that is not the U.S. dollar. So that was my whole spiel for why I think that self-custody, custody, how Bitcoin's going to do as time goes on, and just kind of bring it all together, because it's a good conversation to have. But I just think there's just some missing pieces. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then to finish up, I bought a meme coin called Blub. And it's a meme coin on SWE. And as you may know, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago where I actually put some meme coins in my Roth IRA. Pepe, Bonk, Dog with Had, Doge. I also put gold and silver in my IRA. Soul and ton, but mostly it's Bitcoin. Mostly it's Bitcoin. And this is a difference, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. This is a vast difference. My Roth IRA is a retirement account. But my real portfolio or my main, main portfolio, it's still mostly Bitcoin. Ethereum, Sol, Nier, Cardano, AVAX, Link, Stacks, Arbitrum, blah, 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 and 67 other ones. But for Blub, I thought it was interesting, and I heard this from a couple of friends who are in uh, Europe and Southeast Asia, and they say that this one could do pretty well. So I picked up some, and before anybody asks me, I don't get paid on this channel. They don't pay me. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So... The thing you have to ask yourself is if you're going to get into meme coins, first of all, follow the rules. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave stuff on exchanges. Don't use leverage to take profits along the way. It's very simple. Those are my rules. You can, you can use those or not, whatever. So with this one, Blub's not doing too bad. Seven days, ooh, that doesn't look good. One month, ooh, that doesn't look great at all. Three months, all right. How about a year? Okay. 
So anyhow, people say, well, did you miss, did you miss it? Did you miss it? Look, uh, Dogecoin has been around since 2013. Yeah, 20, it's been around a decade. And uh, just last cycle, people were becoming millionaires off of that one. So what you want to do is you want to trade this. If you want to trade anything, go to coingecko.com. Click on this thing called markets. Mark is going to show you where it's all at. I'm an American citizen. I can't use xt.com, I don't think. Coinex, Orbit, Mexi, I know I can't use that one. But there's this thing called a DEX, a decentralized exchange. And when you click on that, it'll open up like C. I I don't even know what CDIS is, quite honestly. CDIS is a decentralized exchange. I guess it's one of the bigger ones on SWE. And I want to just show you something. If you're going to do this, if, use a decentralized exchange. Watch this. If I have SWE, I'm going to max out. I'm going to... I'm going to take all my SWE, 263, and trade it for Blub. I'm going to get, it's $504 right now for SWE. I'm only going to get $483. That sounds pretty crappy, right? Well, look at this. If I go to the SWE wallet, and if I want to swap, because I have $506, again, of SWE, and I max it out, and I got to split the coin, Blub. I only get 450 bucks. They're taking like 50 bucks from me. So don't use the wallet to swap. Use a decentralized exchange and go from there. That's uh, my only advice if you're gonna go that route. Again, super risky. We'll see if it works out. Who knows? I don't know. And then lastly, oh yeah, yeah. Can anybody, there's a link in the description for Flappy Bird. Again, I don't talk about it unless I own it. It's not a token, but I'm one of the original team members, just know that you can play it. And if you uh, start to post your high scores, maybe we'll be giving away some tokens at some point. So there's a link in the description. I wanna say congratulations to all the, uh, oh wow, 107,000 subscribers. All the people right now that are playing in their different communities from one to 10, it's not coin, dogs, ton radar, catizen, money and I, yes coin, get gems and crypto boy. I don't know who those guys are. But congratulations, who else is here? Crypto Dads and those guys. Ninjas in Pajamas, those are big on Web2. XRP Army, ah, look at that. The XRP Army is in the top 20. And Smart Money Crypto, and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That was a little bit long one, but now let's go into the main stuff and uh, I'll answer all your questions the best way. We gotta take off, take off. Thanks so much, and let's go from here.